Today's video, we check out the blue-haired behemoth as we have a look at the Diamond Select Marvel Select Marvel's Beast. Hank McCoy was one of the founding members of the X-Men, a team of young mutants organized by Professor Charles Xavier. With his enhanced agility and superhuman strength, he was invaluable in the team's battle against evil mutants like Magneto. Hank eventually left the X-Men, and shortly afterwards, the consumption of a mutagenic hormone caused him to sprout gray, later blue, fur all over his body. Now more beast than ever, he was recruited into the Avengers, later joined the Defenders, yet since returned turned to the X family and recently worked with the Inhumans to neutralize the mutant killing Terrigan Cloud. This 7 inch scale figure of Beast includes 16 points of articulation and includes a Danger Room display base combine it with other Danger Room sections from other Marvel Select X figures to build a larger diorama. Hope you guys can actually see Beast, just, just because everything else is blue. We're gonna go ahead and take the tape measure. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put it to the top of the head. That's what we're also gonna do. And stopping it right, right there, right there. There we go. It was about eight and a half inches. The Ultra Measuretron caught it at 8.4, but it'd probably be an 8.5, eight and a half inch figure, which translates to centimeters as being 21.5. As the packaging would hint, we do get ourselves some pieces for the Danger Room. This is great if you've already been collecting the Marvel Select X-Men figures, which I have been. And it comprises of two halves, or at least two halves of the wall. And then that's going to go into the flooring. All you have to do is sort of put the things together, the two books together. Well, I kind of just said it. Put them together almost as if you are making a book. Uh, see these little tab points here? They sort of offset one another and currently they don't hold together until you open it up like a book and now it's not going anywhere. It's got the same color palette as what we've seen with the other diorama bases. Sort of like a pearl, kind of greenish pearl color mixed with some silvers which will be the little brackets for the handles and we've also got a blue version of kind of that pearl coloring and some nice bold black outlining. Then we're going to go ahead and take the display bottom and see these little tabs here? There's three on either side. Those attach very quickly and very easily into the display base. I say quickly and easily and then ultimately I, we have to just kind of, there we go, line them up. Let's try that again. Take two, take two. There we go. Snap everything together and you've got yourself a display base. I'm going to go ahead and move just Beast out of the way just for a split second. He also comes with these little posts, these little uh, handles, in which you probably saw at the beginning of this review, he was hanging off of one of them. Uh, actually rather successful. I didn't think the weight of the figure would have been able to, uh, well, the bar here would have supported the figure, and ultimately it did. Oh, by the way, the cut on my finger, I got into a fight with a small duck. I wanted a piece of bread, the duck weren't, well, don't even want to bore you guys with the stories, but uh, needless to say, the handle right here goes here, goes here, and uh, then we're going to go ahead and take the other post, and there's a hole right there. Line everything up, plug it into place, there we go. Now, this part doesn't actually tab into anything, it sort of just sits loose. The closer you also bring it, the more effective it is, looking like it's attached to the flooring. And there you have sort of like a jungle gym area of the danger room in which beasts can swing around on. While I wouldn't put a lot of confidence in this bar holding them upright unless you just wanted to have the figure next to it, you can actually, it is like I said, strong enough that beasts can hold himself against this bar. Uh, that of course will be requiring some additional hands, I'll talk about that in a second. Really do like the display base so much so I'm going to keep it in here for the rest of this review. Promsies, I'm not going to move it. We'll put Beast here just for another second. A lot of seconds being spent in this review. To also show you the gripping hands. 
Might as well mention it now because that's the thing that you're going to need to attach to the handles. And currently, as it is now, Beast ain't going to be holding on to nothing other than maybe your skull. Uh, the gripping hands definitely will come in handy. And again, you can use that to make use of the display base here. Moving it to the side. As for the figure itself, I'm really actually digging this figure quite a bit. It's a little bit more feral of a beast than what we would normally see. Usually you see a mild-mannered, sort of gentle-looking beast face sculpt. Here, quite the opposite. Uh, they've even omitted the pupils, which initially I didn't care for the fact that the pupils were gone. Instead, we just got ourselves blank white eyes. Then, looking at it, the longer I look at it, the more I'm actually digging the look. Speaking of digging the look... I am digging the <laughs> digging the look. It's got some nice dark blues that they've added to the otherwise medium lighter shades of blue, which is almost about the same coloring as the backdrop here. The face is very nicely sculpted. And I say this in not necessarily a negative way, but you know, looking at the face sculpt, it kind of reminded me of like an old Toy Biz uh, figure of Beast. Cruder, but sort of this is the elevated version of that head sculpt. I don't know why. I don't really necessarily think Toy Biz Marvel Legends, nor do I really think other Marvel Legends as comparisons. I kind of think like the old vintage Toy Biz uh, Marvel figures, if you've ever collected those along the lines. The hair sculpt is very, very beast. Of course, you can see it the way it's been fanned back, similar to, of course, Wolverine. There's the back of his hair right there. Nice blue that's been added to his face. Nice blending also as well, mixing the blues with the blacks. Sometimes you're thinking that you're seeing black hair and then all of a sudden you get this patch of blue on the side. You continue that around and then you get some added black that's been added to the individual strands of the hair. It does really look quite good. Equally said, I equally could say the same thing about the fur that's been added to his body. It doesn't just look like they've taken, what would it be, like a fur tool? It just went like this. They didn't just go like this. You can see that the directions of the fur go different ways just to make it look like it's not consistently the exact same pattern carried from here to over here. And then you, you get some nice dark purple that's added in there as well. Some nice dark blue that's at the top there. Really, it's a fantastic looking figure. If not for the fact that I've got, unfortunately, a little bit of yellow paint that I guess has dripped its way down, bloop, bloop, right there, and ended onto his otherwise very dark black matte pants. It doesn't bother me too much because I'm not obviously going to be looking at it from this side. I'm going to be looking at it from this side. And we got some extra blue in there just to kind of break it up. Of course, here you've got the X logo on the yellow belt. Yellow is always a hard thing to paint on plastic. Ultimately, it either looks like it's either too goopy or it looks like it hasn't been completely finished. Here, not too, too bad. A little bit of yellow has carried its way down, but otherwise pretty clean looking application of the yellow. One thing I wish that the figure did have had though, or would have had, uh, just on the side here, you see how the trunks sort of go up like this, which makes sense, but then right here, it make the pants actually look wider than they do on the back. Or on the back, of course, they're gonna be a little bit wider because that is his beast behind. On the front here, the shape doesn't seem to follow it. Like if you see, it's a curve here. It almost, they should have added some blue right here, right there, right, right there. Just so, because here it, it does make the front of the, the trunks a little boxy. Whereas if they had rounded it a little bit, just kind of like that, it would have looked a little bit more seamless to the way it curved from the back here. There is his fur beast feet, some peg holes on the undersides of his feet, even though the display stand doesn't come with pegs. Again, nice fur treatment overall. I like that the nails are both on his hands, his hands up here, and his feet. This nice bright blue color really pops against the otherwise uh, bl darker blue and kind of medium grade blue that they used for the figure. Okay, so let's talk about his hands. We'll go ahead and pop one of the hands off. There we go. And we'll replace it with the gripping hand. There we go. And depending on how you want to display the figure, I know for the beginning of this review, I sort of just angled the figure down. You can kind of be, you know, get a little bit more creative there. Don't be shy. Get a little bit more creative with 
aired extra dry. I think that's not quite the... You can clip his hand into the post and then because his feet, because his feet angle, there you go, you can actually have Beast somewhat suspended. Ultimately what will end up happening, if you're putting too much pressure on it, these little po the little post handle on the side here will pop right off. But again, you can get it. It's just a case of being very careful with it. Revisiting it if you have to. Plugging that back into place. There we go. There we go. And Bob is your uncle. Actually, Mark is my uncle. But in this case, we've got ourselves what it looks like when everything's finished and put together. And you got to be a little careful, of course. You can't just ham hand it. Um, if your hands are completely comprised of thumbs, where, you know, the adage, I'm all thumbs, you may have a little bit more of a struggle of it. But being very careful, very cautious, and slowly doing it, you can get yourself beast hanging off of the post, which is probably ultimately how I'm going to display the figure. After all that said and done, and revealing the name of my uncle, let's have a look at Beast's articulation. I like that he's a nice, big, bulky bit of plastic. Uh, now keep in mind, really, you look at a figure like this, and I've said this on countless occasions already from Diamond Select, and then you look at something like a Marvel Legends version of Beast, plastic-wise and all the other things that you get for it, I feel like you get a better value, in all honesty, when it comes to the Marvel Select stuff than you get from the other guys. Articulation-wise, his head rotates all the way around, hinges up and down, also hinges back and forth, it's also one of the reasons why I'm just going to stop my train of thought talking about articulation for a second. People have asked me how come I don't have a look at more Marvel Legends figures. Well, it usually ultimately boils down to the fact that I just kind of get exhausted from having a look at the same sculpt again, the same body again, and again, and again, and again. Why I often pick up more often Marvel Select figures is because they are unique sculpts. The This body mold of of Beast, shy of really just giving him a gray treatment, which I'm getting excited just thinking about that. A gray treatment, they probably will never make use of this mold again. They could potentially use it for, you know, werewolf or furry characters, but they may not necessarily use the mold ever again. This goes to the show. That's why I usually pick up Marvel Select stuff over the, uh, the other legends. Okay, so we looked at the head. Head rotates all the way around. Hinges back and forth, up and down. Arms hinge out as well as you can rotate the arms all the way around. Back to my train of thought. Swivel at the bicep. He's got a hinge, a single, single hinge happening right there in the elbow. And he also has a swivel and hinge in the hand, depending on which hand, again, you want to be putting into Beast. Upper torso ball joint, a nice generous amount of posability happening there. Uh, he does have, I think, a waist swivel. I say I think he does. There we go because up to the point of just doing it now, I noticed there was a cut in the waist, but try as I might, I must have not had the powers of Hercules at the moment. Uh, I wasn't able to rotate the waist, but as you can see, yes, there he does have waist articulation. Legs split out, legs go forward, legs go back. He has a three quarter swivel cut in the thigh. He also has a double hinge on the knee. He has a hinge in the foot, which also has an ankle rocking. And again, he's got the peg holes on the undersides of his feet. Not that he necessarily needs it. He stands perfectly fine. I don't know if I would really have asked for anything else for this figure. I mean, ultimately, shy of characters, say, for example, like Gambit, or I'm trying to think of other characters that would have had accessories coming included with them. Generally, most, if not all, the X-Men select figures Usually you get yourself part of the danger room and then you get the figure. For that reasoning, I don't think I feel missed out on the fact that we didn't get any other accessories for Beast. Uh, the figure, I think, perfectly makes up for the fact that he doesn't come with accessories. He's a really neat looking Beast and equally so, he comes with a really neat diorama as well. Beast is one of many countless examples as uh, I can give as to why I collect Marvel Select over the Marvel Legends lineup. I collected Marvel Legends for a while, but in all honesty, due to reviewing them on this channel, I just got burnt out from mold after mold, same after same after same. Diamond Select has been doing this for countless years, still proving to the fact that each character could have its own unique body mold. Fancy that. Shy of just giving this guy as a repaint as perhaps down the road as a Wendigo or Sasquatch, we may never ever see this beast mold come about again. 
other than maybe potentially getting, and I'm kind of excited about the thought of it, a gray version of Beast, if they haven't already done so. And that could easily be something like you could see as a Disney Store exclusive. I like the mold. I like the proportions of this guy. He feels agile and yet still stocky and bulky. The head sculpt is something, and I don't mean to sound this as a negative, but it seems like something I would have seen from an old, very basic, swiveled, armed, swiveled leg beast that we would have gotten from Toy Biz. Kind of like that more dated, vintage look of beast. And I, again, say that in all the more positive ways. I really like this head sculpt quite a bit. The body mold proportion, like I said, is really good. Nice job, Diamond Select. This is kind of the beast that I've been wanting to get for a while, because I know we have kind of get a lot of gentler looking beasts for example we don't get very many feral beasts and for that reason i kind of like that this one has a little bit more aggression in his face sculpt again fantastic work to diamond select if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself you should be able now to find it at local comic book stores and the price point here people have asked me why don't you say the price point well it does vary of course, as you can guess it, from store to store, Canada versus the U.S. versus overseas, for example. Um, I'm going to say here that in Canada, if you're looking to pick up a Marvel Select figure, generally, on average, it costs me about $35. $34.99, rounding up to $35, and then, of course, some lovely tax on top of that. So about $34.99, $35 for the price point here on the Marvel Select figures, and more than worth it when, when you factor in that each one of the figures are so unique to one another, you can get a big Juggernaut, for example, that we've looked at on this channel, and really fitting of a throwback, if you will. But Juggernaut, same price as Beast. You're not paying any bit more for it. So, again, fantastic stuff coming from Diamond Select. If you guys are interested in picking up Beast for yourself, comic book store right now. You can go there. Other than for the fact that they're sold out maybe on him, he should be on shelves right now. Don't hold me to that, because I, I can't make promises for every single store out there just basing off my local store. By the way, guys, if you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Marvel Select reviews, there's a whole playlist just for you. And if you guys haven't had a chance to do so already, hit that little subscribe button down below. I know, I always say little subscribe button down below. But that will guarantee you that when new videos are coming to this channel, I know it, YouTube's still broken, but it will, for the most part, guarantee you that when new videos are coming to this channel, you'll never miss out. But by by far, the best advice I could make to you guys as I drag out this final looks here, make sure you swing by to the main page, the main page on this channel. Go down the sections of videos because that's your best bet to guarantee that you haven't missed out on something. Sometimes people have said, "Have you? could you review something? And I may have literally done it about a week or so ago and you may not have seen it in your notifications. So head on over to the the, the home page if you can check out the other videos and see if there's anything you may have missed along the way more videos guys will be coming your way so as always thanks for watching and i'll see you next time